What's going on guys? This is Mike from J2Fit. Today we're out here on the rooftop doing some outdoor fitness um, and I'm going to introduce to you one of my favorite movements today that we can use on restorative days, um, active recovery, as well as just general warm-ups, uh, whether you're a weightlifter, powerlifter, um, or just a general fitness athlete looking to really increase hip, ankle, knee mobility, as well as maybe improve some of the mobility at the end range to have some great strength, whether you're looking to transition over to squats, heavy cleans and snatches, running, or just general uh, good feeling in the hips to be able to move around and not be sore when you get out of bed. So what we're gonna start off today is I'm gonna teach you how to set up the Kosick squat and then a couple different variations that I like to use, specifically with bands, um, and then also any weighted or counterbalanced ones. So let's get going. So to set up the Kosick squat, we wanna take a look at our stance with our feet. Um, they should be much wider than shoulder width uh, what I like to start off with is have the athlete put their hands down and just trying to find a nice wide base, right? One that they can have their both legs extended, uh, but they're not overly stretched out, feeling like they're going to fall forward or backwards or split the seams of their pants. What we're then going to do is we're going to focus on one side first. So I'm going to focus on my right leg being attached. So I want to have the toes slightly turned down, I'd say probably about anywhere from like 15 to 30 degrees, similar to your squat stance. Um, we're going to latch the inside heel and the big toe, and I'm going to put my weight over, and as I do that, I want to let my hips sink over my heel, and I'm going to sit, and I might be able to rotate my body. I'm not concerned really a lot right now with where my hands are or if my back's rounded. We're just trying to open up the hip. You can see that I released my leg here, uh, and you can do that, and we're going to sit there. Now, I like to use the coaster squat at first to really help people build the, uh, the tension development, and really open up the hips. They can hold straps, they can hold a beam, whatever it is to really try and open up, keep the foot flat. What we're now going to do is we're going to go to the other side. So how we're going to do that, we want to make sure when we first take off, we don't pull our hips back, right? We want to simply try and stay upright and just shove ourselves that way, finding our positioning, and we sit. And then we push ourselves back. And each one, we're just trying to think about sawing our hips down lower and lower, right? Now, there's going to be a point where you're like, oh man, this is so intense, I want to stand up. Resist that urge. That's your body trying to tell you, hey, we don't like this, get out of this. But we're trying to unlock new ranges of motion. So now that you develop the proper awareness and the basic understanding of how do we get down into the coaster squat, right? And once we've figured out where our feet should be based on everyone's hips, um, we then can start adding some variations or regressions and progressions based on someone's balance, strength, or any other issues. So two really uh, big progressions, regressions that I really like to use, whether in my warm-ups uh, with myself, my clients, or athletes, is a counterbalance, right? So you can use a dumbbell, a kettlebell, uh, a book, anything with weight. Obviously, the heavier the weight is, um, there's gonna be some demands in terms of you'll have to keep your extension in the upper back like a front squat. So there's gonna be the strength aspect to it. But also, if it is uh, a little heavier, it might actually help some people get down because it's gonna be a little bit of weight to really kind of push their hips down there, as well as to be able to kind of get the body upright as they kind of reach the weight away. Um, so I really like using kettlebells for that, whether in the double front rack, uh, which would be in another video. Um, but what I also like to do is I like to use the bands. So we're going to now show you how to use the bands, whether in the overhead position, out front, just to create tension with the Kosick squat. So we just talked about a progression with the kettlebell or dumbbell, um, and I'm going to show that again in some kettlebell exercises in some of my videos here. Uh, but I'm waiting on amazing kettlebells to come from Kettlebell Kings. Uh, so thank you, my kettlebell sponsors. But for this part here, I'm going to show you a really simple one that you can use with bands. Uh, it's going to really help you just retract the shoulder blades, you get a lot of the same postural muscles that you'd get when you're back squatting or front squatting. Um, and it's all necessary. And I do find that the bands help beginners um, really gain a better sense of how to get upright in this bottom position, which is going to be great for squatting, snatching, as well as just general body mechanics. So the, the tension on the band isn't really uh, a huge thing. Um, I like to have a light tension. 
If it's any bigger, it's going to turn into an upper body workout. And I just want to have enough where they know that they're working and they're having to kind of, you know, lock in. So the first variation is simply just light band tension. doesn't matter. You can grab one or two. And what they're going to do is they'll assume their Kosick squat position and they're going to just put some tension. All that does is it kind of forces me to be upright and I can kind of focus on shooting my hands out in front. And what I find is I'm actually able to lock into my better body position, right? It's not really how far you can stretch it out. It's really just forcing you to lock your lats in and stay tight. And then we go across, keep in tension, and we're right there. Now, the next one, uh, it's gonna be a little more progressed. And I really like some light tension here, is up overhead. So, weightlifters, this one's big for you. Keeping it through here, just finding that positioning, really locking in, getting some tension on there. And we're right through there. And that is how you do that overhead banded close squat, another great progression to really open up those hips, get the back set, and get ready to move. So that's everything you know to get set up for the close squat. We went over the setup. Uh, some simple progressions and regressions with bands, as well as discuss some weighted training. Uh, but once again, this is a great exercise to really open those hips up, get the knees moving, ankle mobility, uh, which can be improving the squat, the snatch for weightlifters, or just general hip movement and health, which is great for aging populations, young athletes, in-season athletes. Uh, it's a really great bodyweight movement for all levels. Thanks again, and if you guys enjoyed this, Comment below, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and let me know of any cool little exercises you'd like to see, whether it's body weight uh, for beginners, more advanced, weightlifting videos, you name it, we'll make it. Thanks.